uh, we um, uh, traveled around for about six months to figure out what we really want to do in the social space. So uh, we went ahead and said we're going to work with the people and with food and with the skill sets we have, that is marketing and IT. So they came um, a firm called eFarm, that is enabling farmers reach markets. And we said we will be, as a family, we will start this because that's all we had in terms of capital and the skill sets. And it's been a long journey. In the three years, it seems longer than uh, the other years I have lived in. Um, Venkat um, is an IIT in an architecture by academics. And I'm Srivali. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I have done my MBA, have a banking background, and my husband has an IIT background. And we both said we want to do something for the agriculture. And when we went traveling, we found that food touches everyone and can employ anybody who is able or disabled, or in mental or non-mental, because there are two categories. There are people who are non-mental who think um, you know, they're steady, but others uh, know that they're just undiagnosed in terms of either depression or any other kind of uh, mental illnesses people might have in. So we said that if something common has to come about from farming to disability to working with uh, you know uh, people who have to be included in terms of you know um, being part of the whole mainstream food is something which everybody associates with and we said what efarm is going to do is help farmers reach out to these buyers who are anyway going to buy fruits and vegetables and uh, who's going to pay is the person who's going to decide what he wants to be grown in India, we've seen that farming has been an activity which is, uh, which is equivalent to godliness, philanthropy, and charity. It's never treated as business. And that is why we see every year 40% plus youth from the farming background coming to the cities and waiting for a job to happen where they would have stayed back and make farming happen and feed themselves and the world around them. We said, what is that is stopping the farming community from taking up farming? Because the youth felt it was not uh, you know, uh, glamorous enough, uh, price was not right. And we saw that a lot of people who have earned their uh, you know, um, badges, their awards, uh, their uh, ranks up the uh, corporate ladder have come back and started farming. But people who are actually uh, by, uh, you know, uh, by ancestry, by uh, you know, God's gift that they have lands, are not interested in farming. Mr. Mahadevan here is one such example which we looked up to when we started eFarm. Th there are many more Mr. Mahadevans, but very few when you consider 1.2 billion population in India. And the farming community is 65 plus and cannot be more innovative than uh, they've already got. And they can do those so much. You cannot expect a farmer to grow, to you know, be able to transport it, to be able to fund it, to be able to reach the markets, and even bear the losses at the end of the day. So this is making the whole community of farming a very um, you know, a lackluster proposition. So we said we're going to change this all because we can't wait for the governments. We can't wait uh, for the universities, the funding agencies to make agriculture viable. We ourselves as youth or so-called youth, I mean, in my generation, I'm 35 now, so I don't know whether I'm in, uh, you know, either in a late youth or in an early old age, but definitely want to make a difference. So the, this, I mean, uh, the, the kind of platform we got in Chennai in terms of uh, being able to sell vegetables for ourselves in every road corners, in the, by the sea, organic, inorganic, inside the slums, with people with different abilities, um, um, and uh, with uh, different uh, mental states of consciousness, I could say, um, we felt that everybody is able to do a bit and make the difference. And this is, a, uh, and that's how over a period of three years we evolved eFarm, where we work with not only the corporates, the uh, you know our customers are the Tajs, the flight kitchens, the Oberoi's, and the food processing industry, and we have uh, people whom we. Uh, uh, partner with like Rasa, Banyan, and uh, of course uh, we have uh, Deepa ma'am uh, from Ability also 
who knows and works with us. We work with self-help group women uh, that is from the Thundalam uh, region. And uh, we work with the farming community. We work with uh, almost uh, one lakh farmers in, in, the, in, China, in Tamil Nadu. And now we are going to different parts of the country. So what we do in eFarm is making people smile with food. How do we do that? A farmer gets better price, a truck driver gets his money on time, a buyer gets what he has asked for. He gets apples, not oranges. He pays, he pays for apples and gets apples, and he pays for oranges and gets oranges. And he gets the right weight, right quality he's expecting. And the farmer uh, and, the, and the customer and the end customer who's, who could be a, a person who's eating in a restaurant or buying it off a kirana shop or a pushcart, also is uh, uh, assured of good quality and good price. What is good price is something which we are trying to redefine. Today, um, the farm gate price uh, escalates to about 400% before it reaches you. And the poorest of poor, actually, if you pay 18 rupees uh, per kg for tomato, for a good quality one, by the evening market, a poor person is paying almost 9 rupees for just about 200 grams of the same tomato, which is rotten, because he can't afford it. We are making food, throwing it, but making it in affordable people for the 99% of the population, which is out there on the streets, out there in the villages. The farmer has lesser nutrition content in his food than an urban person because he grows vegetables and makes sure everything reaches the metro, the city. And he keeps very little for himself. So if you see all this um, are the problems and issues with the horticulture space. And if we get this horticulture space in farming right, a lot of nutrition and a lot of lives and uh, uh, the incomes of farmers and people involved assisting him to reach markets will be greatly improved. So we said we are going to work with these communities, and we said we will participate in this by being a buyer, and also by facilitating information on what the buyer wants from the farmer, and organizing it, saying that not everyone in a place grows tomatoes, not everyone in a place grows onions and dumps it on the road, but make sure that the customer knows how much is being produced and how much he would be willing to pay for this. So a simple plan, a simple information feedback to the farmer can change the way the pricing is moving up, the food inflation is moving up, and we can encourage more farmers. Like uh, Mr. Mahadevan would, uh, would say that he has a photocopy machine. He's going to take photocopies of himself because we need more farmers like him. And like Mr. Mansoor Khan, who's going to come here, uh, giving up movies and going back to the wild acres in Kunur and trying to do uh, you know, uh, organic farming. This, these kind of farmers are going to be spearheading a new thought process where a lot of youngsters who are educated, probably could be engineers, could be uh, doctors, could be uh, you know, uh, doctors in the sense uh, uh, PhDs in doing something, but they could come back to the farm and use uh, some bit of their time and mind share. Today, brain drain is happening in agriculture in a big way. So we work. And uh, if the youths don't come back, you will have no money to, you will have no food to eat, you will have money to of course, in your banks, but you can't download tomatoes. You might have online technology, but you still can't cook, uh, you know, an American dollar to make a soup out of it. At the end of the day, the greens are not supposed to be the notes. It is supposed to be the leaves which come out of the plants. So when we talk about green bill, it's like, okay, it should be a green leaf. That's the change we want to bring about, saying that the youth should focus not just on IT and related cushy jobs sitting out of in the AC rooms, but also move back to the fields. Make sure they, their communities, and themselves are fed. If you don't walk out there and you know, you know, work with the people who are already 65 and learn what they, all, they know and it is it's just vanishing quickly, we'll have no food to be to be eaten. We can't import food. Everybody thinks we can import food everywhere in the world. The same thing is happening. If everyone decides not to grow, not to be part of agriculture, there'll be no culture left.
You're talking about global culture. We'll have a culture where there's no agriculture, then sorry, all of us are going down the same lane. Starvation, food rights. What I'm saying is, it's not something which is uh, to frighten people, but I'm saying this is the only profession um, which has employed all kinds of people. We have gone away from those kind of occasions, or, I mean, occupations, which people, uh, you know, uh, were connected to the soil, were able to do. Adhritarashtra was an emperor. And you could see Pandu, um, and his uh, brother, had a uh, skin issue, but he was included. In Mahabharata or in, um, you know, anything, if you see, the, the, everything comes back to agriculture for making a whole civilization, a cultured civilization. So what we are trying to do in e-farm is not just connecting farmers to the buyers. In the course, we want to make it attractive enough for youth by introducing technology. Where we work on e-farm direct, which is a platform where um, we're using technology, we're using uh, mobile um, applications to reach out to the community. And we do workshops to encourage people to get, get back to agribusinesses and um, put them on to the world where, you know, financiers, people who are interested in the, in the same communities are made, uh, you know, they know what, are, what is there because the information is not shared in the space. Luckily, I have one of, uh, one of my uh, uh, colleagues here who participated in our e-farm workshops. He's from uh, Great Lakes College. The journey, uh, of course, has been wonderful, but if you see that, if you value every time you see the fruit on your way, on your plate that there are about uh, 20 people who were involved in bringing that uh, apple to your doorstep, you really appreciate that. You might say that, you know, uh, uh, it's not good quality, but it has taken someone, to, 20 people to make it reach out to you. So I would wish that everyone acknowledges those 20 people because they've been doing that. And the moment they decide to go out of business, we are left with no apples. We may buy an iPad, iPhone, an Apple product, but what I'm saying is we can't eat it. Let's all wake up and say, let's get back to agriculture in the way it's supposed to be. We are 60% agrarian economy. We can do manufacturing, but the raw materials come from agriculture. So we need someone out there producing it. So me and my husband in eFarm, we're just trying to do a bit what we think we learned from peers like Ms. Madhavan. Uh, Mr. Mansoor Khan and others who are there doing, making the difference, like the Ability Foundation. So you can think creatively and connect people with food and include them very easily. So, I mean, sky is the limit and um, the young, younger generation, I invite them to in innovate more in this space. And um, with that, I think um, I could just have the next slide. I just want to share uh, some of the communities we work with. Yeah, we work with uh, uh, the old age communities. We make sure they get the nutrition of fruits and vegetables. We work with the Rasa, differently evil kids. Uh, we work with the farming communities, uh, self-help group women, and with Banyan women who have been rehabilitated uh, we try to give them some kind of vocation so that they make their monies at their doorstep in their hostels. So um, I'm not, but we are not an NGO. We are a commercial organization, a private limited company. So we're saying that we don't want to do charity or philanthropy, but just want to do business in a different way. And so we call ourselves a social enterprise. Um, we, in this platform, I'm very thankful that I'm able to meet so many people from different uh, different aspects of life, um, I'm sure you can carry back a message for me that whenever you see someone looking for a job, show him a field and tell him, make, make it a heaven, make it Eden. And then, and then he will have food to eat and so would we. And the food prices and inflation would definitely come down. And that's all I would like to. Thank you. <laughs>